2022. And on the Urban Squeeze this afternoon, well, something particularly topical. Well, it's always pretty topical, but public art. Dr Tony Matthews from the School of Environment at Griffith is with me. Jason Byrne, he's elsewhere this afternoon. Tony, but you're here. I am, and glad to be here. And Jason sends his apologies. He's, <laughs> he's in Melbourne for the for the latter half of this week, so he couldn't join us, That's unfortunately. That's quite all right. Perfectly, perfectly legitimate reason. Uh, public art, though, is topical and something that we were talking about in the context of these gateway uh, installations, if you like, at the north and, uh, and south of the coast. Yeah, so this is probably one of two major talking points in the the public art uh, question on the Gold Coast at the moment and I'll just preempt this by saying Gold Coast is actually doing a really good job right now in public art or at least they're scaling up to do a really good job and that, I was doing some research for the show during the week and I was looking at some of the specific projects that that the coast has in mind and that the council has in mind and that they're tying in with other other events like the comm games and things like that and I really got into what they're doing I think there's actually some really great stuff happening but these uh, these projects that you mentioned the um, uh, the gateway projects are the, which are north of here and south of here so there's two major um, proposed art installations. Uh, one is uh, just as you're sort of leaving Brisbane, heading into the uh, Gold Coast region, you're, you're kind of crossing over the, the boundary there, just, just south of the Albert River. So there's one proposed for there. We'll talk about that in a second. And then there's another proposed for the southern entry point of the Gold Coast. So down around where you live, Matt, down around towards the, the border area. This is a question that I put to some callers earlier in the week. I mean, what would you put there? Uh, here's a little taste of what we heard in response. Why do you fill me up? A toilet block. <laughs> a toilet block, you reckon? Yeah. <laughs> Why so? Oh, when the traffic's blocked on the M1, you can go to the toilet. Look, it has to be a big red dot. We've already paid for it already. We may as well leverage, leverage it across our empire. See, when I get down the beach of the Gold Coast, all I see is thongs. Mm. I think a good song, you know, a surfy joke. See your true colours shining through. Seeing how it's a state government project, um, it should be the bikey's colours. <laughs> good idea, Mark. Well, I think on the south side or the north side, we should have a giant surfer. A surfer, you reckon? Yeah, a surfer, a big surfing statue with a guy or a girl with a board or a boat. And on the board have all the names and big board letters with whoever are the like. A big, peeling, southern oh, point that break be, barrel. That'd be amazing. That'd, that'd be, be terrific. Yeah, that'd be amazing. You could get Mick Fanning in to consult to the project. <laughs> <laughs> I love that idea. Hey, you know hey. what? That's really good. Are you That's better than an application? Be- it's better than my taco shell <laughs> yeah. idea from before. Oh, no, I don't know about Well, the Mexican shell. food's very big at the moment. I'm moving away from a sculpture mm-hmm. and having more something like a hologram effect. Uh, again, having its massive big curling wave uh, with two people surfing it, like yes. a, a he and a she, but then as you're driving past it, of course, it's moving. Oh, it goes so with you. getting the visual effect of the wave curling as you're driving past it. Well, Tony Matthews, it's fair to say some took the idea a little more seriously than others, but at least there was some thinking about what this all might look like for the Gold Coast. Well, which is great because public art is designed to engage, uh, not always positively. <laughs> like all art, public art is entirely interpretive and it's not for everybody and certain pieces will resonate with people and others won't and some people will see the whole project as a waste of money and other people will see it as a wonderful thing. So great to hear that the callers are so engaged when you had them on the mm. other day. Um, the Gold Coast uh, right now, they have um, a city arts and strategic um, our City Arts and Culture Strategic Advisor and that's a, a woman called Robin Archer uh, who's well known the, in the entertainment and media industry and she uh, I, I took a nice little quote from an article that I was reading where she was quoted the other day and she said public art provokes the question what is going on here mm. and it seems like your discussion earlier in the week with the listeners about the Gateway Project certainly provokes the discussion what is going on here for better or for worse more but particularly discussion. is it a good thing <laughs> um, but yeah so I, I these two projects um 
first of all, we have a better idea of what is being sought at the northern end of the of the coast. So the, the council have put out a very clear design brief for that. And what they're looking for uh, is something that will run 75 metres along the M1 as you're coming south from Brisbane um, between the northern uh, north and south lanes. It'll be 75 metres long, 11 metres high. They reckon 155,000 people are going to see it every day and that it's going to take the average car about three seconds to pass it. That's a significant bit of work. Huge. That's massive. Huge. That is an enormous piece of work. That's like something out of uh, Ray Bradbury's four, Fahrenheit 451 where he said <laughs> you're going to need these enormous billboards in the future because we'll be travelling so quickly. Yes, um, yes. It's going to be huge. So it's big statement art. This is grand scale public art. This is you know, high stakes stuff. So the main thing here is that they get it right. Now, my version of what's right or your version of what's right or anyone's version of what's right will probably differ. But this is going to be a legacy project. um, And we're going to have to make sure that it is something that really stands out and stands the test of time. So as I said, the Northern Gateway design proposal, that's already been formulated to some degree. There's still a lot of uncertainty about what's going to happen with the Southern equivalent. Um, There's no design brief that I've seen yet and indeed no confirmed site for where it'll be yeah yeah um, so yeah. the northern one seems to be the focus right now um and so there's uh there's an open call i believe for artists to submit concept designs so it's a huge piece it's i mean yeah. this is massive this goes beyond you know this goes beyond standard sculpt um, sculpture scale or anything like that this is enormous you mentioned uh before that the gold coast does public art or is doing public art reasonably well mm-hmm. and, and I want to hear more about what your thoughts are on that uh, in a moment but can we sort of broaden the scale of it yeah. I, I mean what cities are renowned for incorporating into their design and their personality you know significant and memorable pieces of, of public art what, what what do you compare yourself to well if you want to look at the real world leaders um, and I'm not sure that the Gold Coast is necessarily trying to compete with these cities. But I suppose it's more, more uh, talking about contemporary cities, new, modern cities. Modern new cities. cities. Okay. Chicago has a big reputation. Oslo has a big reputation. Melbourne has a big reputation. Barcelona, Mexico City, Singapore, Tel Aviv, San Francisco. Those are the kind of global leaders. So the, it, it is an international thing. People oh, yeah. do take this very seriously. Extremely seriously. And many cities actually leverage a fair bit of their tourist industry on the basis of public and street art. And a lot of them have festivals built around it or they've used it as a, um, a means for urban renewal. So, for example, Melbourne's done a lot of that. A lot of how they've activated and enlivened laneways, for example, in Melbourne is by art, bringing artists in there. Uh, and people tend to respond to space a little differently when it has been painted or muraled or something like that as yeah. opposed to when it's just in its more... It's interesting thinking of the laneway system in Melbourne as an installation uh, unto itself. So, yeah, they become outdoor sites, basically, outdoor galleries, and that's kind of the purpose of public art. So public art is anything that happens outside a conventional gallery or museum. So in that context, examples from here, we've got the Marquetta down at Miami, things like Night Quarter up at Helen's Vale. Are they, are they in the same sort of ballpark, that kind of thing? Yeah, and you've got other things here as well, like you've, you've, you've got the the, um, uh, the Southern Gold Coast uh, Public Art Trail, which runs from Corumban to Coolangatta. That has 20 pieces in it. You can follow the whole way along, mostly it's sculpture, some mural work as well. Um, you've got the other big project, which is quite controversial. That's the Urban Oasis project that's just been greenlighted for Surface Paradise. That's mm. the Silver Ferns. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, which is just an interesting point, actually. The artist that won that uh, that won that tender is um, a guy called uh, Alex Pentec, and he's not just from Ireland, but he's from the same town as I am and I know no I know where he's going I know the National Sculpture Factory Did you have something to I had do nothing with this? to do with it I didn't even know who the guy was till I, <laughs> till I saw the winning design but um, I know where he's building it it's not too far from where I used to live um, so this is the big one uh, and this is going to be down in Surfers and this is this, so the idea here with this one is this is going to um, be the sort of the entryway to the new Gold Coast Cultural Precinct which is envisaged uh, for uh, Evandale so yes. this is so we're talking this is the the, um, the intersection of Surface Paradise Boulevard and Elk Avenue. Uh, The council sought uh, a variety of different suggestions and design treatments for a large-scale public art project there. Uh, The winning one was four silver ferns mounted on each corner of the intersection reflecting the subtropical um, fern um, uh, or the subtropical climate and the ferns that grow here. This was the, there's mm. the clear concept behind it but a lot of people have looked at this and gone well hang on wait a minute this looks like the, the kiwi crest what are we what are we trying to sell here you know what are yeah. we yeah. Um, so there's a lot of controversy around that but that's a, another big statement piece by the council. At Urban Squeeze Dr Tony Matthews with me this afternoon and we're talking public art Tony. Mm. Art that can withstand weather. 
important, <laughs> perhaps. I would stand weather and critique. Yes. Um, yeah, just to go back to the Urban Oasis project from surfers, the silver ferns. So quite controversial because a lot of people are saying, well, ferns, fair enough. Yes, we do have those around the coast. They are not generally silver. And this looks awfully like the uh, the, the, the Kiwi crest. Now, yeah. I'm sure a lot of New Zealanders. Well, 10 percent of the population here will be mm. thrilled. Um, but uh, a lot of criticism as well about that project uh, for its cost. Now, a word on that. The cost is three hundred and thirty thousand dollars. But uh, a note of reality is that that money was already there. That was actually given to the council by the Newman government. So okay. it's been in a pot for quite a while and it was ring fenced for a public art. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of people out there saying this is a waste of time. We don't need this. We should be spending this money on schools or hospitals or whatever. Um, on the money is not available for that. It had to be for a large scale public art project. And that's what we're getting. So we have to decide whether or not we agree with with that sort itself. of thing, yeah. Um, Should cities plan for public art? I mean, can it become, uh, rather than something that you supplement a city with, can a city, in a sense, supplement a suite of artworks? Can you do it the other way around? I think Gold Coast is kind of heading in that way, it would seem, from my reading of it. Now, there's currently, there is a lot of support for public art on the coast, planning support. Um, it's led by the Gold Coast Cultural Strategy. There is a public art plan here, but it's it's almost 10 years old. It's from 2007. So as far as I understand that the council are actually working um, on a new public art plan to be released fairly soon under the auspices of the Cultural Strategy. So they are taking public art very seriously here and public art delivery. Um, there seems to be a particular focus on sculpture on the Gold Coast. There mm. seems to be a, a lot of sculpture around and there's a, a focus on more sculpture. You know, we've got the Gateway Projects, the Urban Oasis, all the stuff that's going to happen in Evendale. Um, a lot of that looks like being sculpture. We already have the Swell, the, 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 the Swell Sculpture Festival. We have the... the, the um, I mean, you can, even, you can very legitimately say that the Sand Sculpting Championships are public art as well, because they are. Um, we have the Satellite Swell Project. So there's a lot of sculpture being planned around here. So yeah, you can absolutely plan proactively for public art and, and capture its value and, 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 and bring to bear cultural cultural currency and leverage tours and all kinds of things which i think is partly what's being thought of here and i think the one of the major incentives is what's happening in 2018 with the games um but important to remember as well that public art tends to manifest itself with or without plans that public art can come along in a very unstructured unsanctioned guerrilla fashion um very often people will just take it upon themselves to create artworks in public spaces now a lot of people will look at that and say well that's tagging that's bad it's graffiti that's mm. criminality um Again, I mean, there's a subtle difference. There's a difference between tagging and graffiti. That's just, tagging's quite different from graffiti. A lot of graffiti artists start out by tagging. Mm. Not all taggers become graffiti artists. So cities do deal with that a lot. Um, but some of that unsanctioned stuff can have enormous cultural and indeed economic value. So you think about, say, for example, one of the most famous public artists in the world is probably Banksy, right? Yep, yep. Now, so most of the, most of the stuff that Banksy does is completely unsanctioned. It's not in sanctioned areas. It's not sanctioned art. It has never been commissioned. It just turns up in random places and immediately becomes incredibly valuable. So if you see, for example, it turns up on the sides of buildings. Immediately, the building owner goes out and gets the most expensive reinforced piece of Perspex they can <laughs> afford and they bolt it on around Press the artwork. it up against because it. If yeah. they don't, somebody will come along and try and jack, jackhammer it off the building or something. And Which this, this speaks happened, of the personality you know? of a place, too. Does, There's a playfulness and an interactive kind of element that, uh, well, it just reminds you that cities are living and breathing. They are. And it also, what's really, what I really like about public art is it reminds you that the city is full of people who are looking at it in a different way to you. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Whatever way you're looking at the city or I'm looking at the city, other people are looking at it differently. They're looking at, at a wall and saying, well, there's a perfect place for a mural. They're looking at uh, you know, a piece of street furniture and saying there's a perfect place for a stickering project. Uh, you, you know, They're looking at the city as, as an exhibition space. You and I may have different perceptions on what, what the city is or what it does or what it offers, but there's a lot of artists drifting around quietly, looking at it as an opportunity waiting to happen. Yeah. Um, and you, know, you saw, for example, New York subway cars in the 1980s were absolutely covered in graffiti, but that was a huge scene. You know? That was that that was one with international value. I mean, that was an enormously important um, phase in public art. So these kinds of things sometimes happen in a very unsanctioned way, and cities are faced with two choices. Well, three really. There's one is you can just shut it down and get rid of it. Um, two is you can keep the bits you like, or three is you can try sanctioning it by creating places where people can actually um, install their art or, or or paint or do whatever. Um, but the problem, well. Not a problem, but a consequence of that is very often what you end up with is a wider blast zone. So a city might say, OK, here's a wall. It's 10 metres long. It's six metres tall, 
that wall is available for art projects. Come along, do what you will with it. Paint over each other's work if you mm. want. What you'll often find happens then is there's a blast zone around that. So the art starts to spill off the sanctioned space and onto other buildings and other <laughs> fixtures. And, and you end up with a much larger canvas than you originally, originally thought you'd get. You know, And this is the, the thing about a lot of public art. If it's not big sanctioned stuff like the the Gold Coast is prioritizing right now, there's still an appetite for creative expression. Same thing that, you know, people play music without record deals. It's the same thing, you know? <laughs> you, uh, I, I can feel or, or sense the councillors of the Gold Coast wincing at the thought of, uh, uh, you know, the, the rules and regulations being flouted. Um, we'll have to leave it there, Tony. No worries. Always good to see you. Thank Always you. a pleasure. Thanks, Matt. Tony Matthews, Dr. Tony Matthews from Griffith University School of Environment, Urban Squeeze for another week.